Today we will be discussing John's Gospel, uh, chapter 16, verses 12 to 15, uh, which the church reads uh, at the Feast of the uh, Holy Trinity. I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me, because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Well, in this reading, Jesus is continuing to prepare his disciples uh, for what is coming when he ascends to the Father. And he's promised them earlier in the gospel uh, that he will never leave them to fend for themselves. Uh, and he now assures them that the spirit of truth will be guiding them uh, to all truth. So in John 14, which is two chapters ahead of this reading, he tells the disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, which the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows it. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. So the first advocate is Jesus, because he intercedes for us in heaven. But the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, is the another advocate sent by the Father, who will fulfill the role as teacher, witness to Jesus, prosecutor of the world, and who represents the continued presence of Jesus on earth who has returned to the Father. It is the Spirit who continues to reveal the love of God for us, inspire the writers of sacred scripture, and to give us God's word in the Gospels and the Epistles. Bring into being and guide the church and guide our lives that we may know and follow Christ. So Jesus goes on to say, you are in me and I am in you. Well, so why is that important? Well, this means, among other things, that we never face our struggles alone. Christ has suffered what we are suffering. And because his spirit lives in us, he is literally present in our suffering. It is not news to God that we might be going through a rough patch. As God tells Paul when he begs him to remove the thorn from his side, my grace is sufficient for you. But how does he know this? Because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he is in us all the time. Therefore, as Christians, we do not avoid suffering but we are given the grace of hope to persevere through it. When you are up against it and you can't believe the suffering can get any worse, and then it does, the ability to keep moving forward out of the darkness and into the light is the grace of God in the Spirit working in you. In verse 13, Jesus says, but when he comes, the spirit of truth will guide you to all truth. Well, the spirit of truth, this term describes a moral force put in us by God. This is our conscience. This is the place where we know right from wrong. And this is the place where we actually are alone with God. So I don't know about you, 
But when life is happening, sometimes it gets difficult to, for me to see the way God's grace is working in my life. And I wonder if my body is a very good temple for the Holy Spirit to be living in. So this prayer helps remind me that trying to do God's will makes his love and his grace enough for me. And I need to ask for nothing more. All is gift from God. Many of you know this as the Merton Prayer. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think that I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. When I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you, and I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing, I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. God bless you.